Welcome to Zenergy, the interactive toolbox, providing resources for building a better life. I am Zena Shea, your catalyst, coach, and conduit to that better life. A catalyst, a coach, draws out hidden potential within a subject. A conduit provides a connection. The amazing thing about human beings is we become our four foot, five foot, six foot selves from a microscopic seed and egg. Just as we have massive potential to grow physically, the same is true mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. But we don't always grow completely mentally, emotionally, and spiritually without some help, without tools, without teachers. That's what helps us to grow. Gotcha. Um, some of us have reservoirs that we have not tapped into because, again, sometimes it takes stress to get us to tap into those reservoirs. <laughs> Sometimes that's when we become who we're supposed to be when we go through stress. Um, and we are in stress right now. But stress can be a positive. It can lead to growth. Or stress can be a negative. So this show is about, in the middle of stress, giving you some different food for thought, some different interviews, some different insights that you can use to kind of challenge yourself to think about things differently and to just grow. So Azure is Energy Catalyst. That's my job. That's my goal. That's my mission to connect you with all kinds of tools. It might be a meme on Facebook. It might be a video I show you. It's definitely going to be interviews, uh, merchandise. You know, I have articles out. I have books out. Um, so if you look over there on the wall, which you'll be able to see from the video, my link tree is over there. I'm going to talk a little bit about my merch in a little while. So you can go to the website and you can buy merchandise because we need triggers. We need to look at things that remind us of who we are. We need to surround ourselves with an environment that is affirming of who we are because the environment that many of us um, naturally are in is not affirming. It tells us negative messages about ourselves. And so we actually have to seek out positive messages about ourselves. You may need to cut off some groups that you're in on Facebook because all they do is talk about drama and mess. Yes. And you might need to seek out some more positive groups that are putting out positive messages. So what you're exposing yourself to is critical, especially in times of stress. We need to care for ourselves. We need to um, invest in our mental and emotional health because if you don't have that, you don't have anything. And your immune system is directly impacted by your mental and emotional health. So we are going to be talking about a support system today, a support system that is actually within us and around us. Um, and that is what we want to be tapping into so that we don't feel like we have to get through everything alone. We don't feel like we have to uh, struggle and, and drown <laughs> in all of this negativity that surrounds us on a daily basis. And so we have to have helpers. We have to have, I call them teammates. Teammates. Because we are in this game of life. The game of life. And so this is my teammate today. So could you tell them your name? I'm teammate Baba Fana. <laughs> and I used to be an athlete, so that that you know that whole coach you know teammate hey. thing that just is my whole realm, you know. Uh, so I was an athlete for many years in middle school, high school, and even a little bit in college. Um, and I understand the importance of teammates. You cannot get through a game without teammates, and I don't see any way that you can get through the game of life without teammates. You have to you have cannot. people that you can go to that you can get wisdom from insight from support from that you can share your struggles with you have to have that community um, and whether it's virtual or physical whether it's a phone call or a text message whether it's a video whatever it is you have to have that community i don't think anybody can make it out here alone you know there nope. was an old quote no man is an island nope so we have to have that community and so that's part of what this energy movement is about giving us the energy to build that peace in our lives, giving us tools for that urge to get to a better place, to evolve. And so that's what we're here for, to, to connect people who want to do that, 
to create a whole movement of people who want to do that and to bring on people who have different resources to help you do that. I see. And so we're going to start off with something that for me is something I do not every day, but um, I went through initiation, getting back to my roots, uh, learning a lot about African culture, learning a lot about our ancestry and, and, and what would have happened had I not been taken away from my homeland, uh, the ways I would have been trained, the belief system I would have had. And, you know, we even, in a sense, know this instinctually. I remember watching Boys in the Hood and they poured one out for the homies. Yeah. There was this ancestral knowledge that we should, re you know, reconnect and recognize those people who used to be here and have moved on, that they are somehow still here with us and, and pouring out one for the homies, that was one way that that was done. And so I'm gonna have Baba Fana do a libation for us. You know, um, there's many things you can say. It's not like there's one thing that you can say, but this is just recognizing the fact that in our bodies, like right now I've got my veins full mm -hmm. of blood. That's right. And scientists say that there is at least 1,024 ancestors mm -hmm. running through my body right now, running through these veins. Their mm -hmm. strength, their wisdom is inside of me. I may not be aware of it at all times, but I am here because they lived. And I am here because of what they went through. And I actually, in a sense, owe them to live the best life I can and to honor them. And not only that, but they are also here to you know, through maybe a dream, through maybe my mama's voice is in my head all the time. All the time. All the time. Even though she's been gone for over a year now. Mm -hmm. They are they are there. Those memories. Those memories, those those feelings. I hear a, I hear a song and that's my daddy. Mm -hmm. Ray Charles, every time I hear Ray Charles, that is <laughs> my daddy. You know, or a certain food or a certain place. And it takes me right back to my grandmother's house or my, you know, all these people that have gone on. So we just want to take a moment and, and pour out a libation. And I want you to recognize that no matter what you're going through. That's right. Your ancestors are there. Their, their strength is there. Their wisdom is there. Their presence is there. They love you. They are there for you. And, and as black people, sometimes we don't. We, we're not taught that. I remember going to the Catholic church and they had all these saints <laughs> up on the altar. None of them looked like me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know any of them except for what I was taught in Catholic school. But that is a concept of ancestors. That's exactly what it is. And, and it was taken from our culture. And then we were told to have, you know, <laughs> any kind of connection with our ancestors as pagan. And, and wrong, but it's in the Catholic Church. It's and I in remember, everything. Let's, I remember Baba Fana talking about this. So I wanted you to do a libation. Okay, and, and then and I'll get into that too. Yes. Okay, first we're going to do the libation, then we use water. And the important thing about water is water is a conduit. Water is a, when I say a conduit, it's a mechanism of moving energy. You remember when you was a kid, this is for older folks, y'all, young folks don't know this, but when we was a kid, we was told, don't put our fingers in the, in the, in the socket. And, we, and what you would do is if you put your finger in the socket, you get a little shock, but nothing's it. But if you were standing in water, you get electrocuted. And so water is a medium that allows energy to travel. And our ancestors are living in the Zamani Sasa. They're living on another realm, another energy realm than this one right here. So water allows them to come down and join us. And so anything that I say that you may agree with, you can say Ashe, you can say Amen, you can say Mm-hmm, you can say That's Right. And we're just going to honor our ancestors briefly, and then we're going to continue on with the conversation. For our brothers and sisters in the motherland, specifically along the Nile, who gave us the gifts of religion, civilization, science, and medicine, and all the things that we have come to find out are essential to civilization, we say, Ashe. Sure. To our sisters and brothers on the west coast of Africa, which we have been, who were kidnapped and dragged across the Atlantic Ocean, whose bones lie in the Atlantic Ocean, but whose life lives inside of us, we say Ashe. Ashe. To our sisters and brothers that have joined us throughout the planet mm -hmm. as we make the transition from leaving this toxic vortex of evil, this toxic way of thinking, to returning to a holistic way of being in tune to the God 
nature in each other, we say, Ashe. Ashe. To our children yet to come, we promise that you that we will leave a path that will allow you to become all that the Creator intended you to be. We will do this because we are committed to the liberation of our people, and we are also committed to the liberation of ourselves to be the best human beings that we can be on the planet. We say, Ashe. Ashe. And if you would like to call out a personal relative or a person who was part of our history that you would like to call out to join us today, I'm going to call out a few. You can say this in your mind or you can say this out loud. Harriet Tubman, Ashe, Ashe, Marcus Garvey, Ashe, 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 Luther Vandross, Ashe. Esther King, Ayana Ade, Ashe, 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 my mother, Miss Helen Rose Vincent, Ashe, Ashe. And you can continue calling out the names of those who you wish to have us join us today. And we say, Ashe, 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 O. Now, breaking quickly into what we we're going to talk about with the, with, with the symbols that we see around us. It's an interesting dynamic. The Catholic Church has nothing but ancestral marks up, and it's called statues. And the statues are people who lived before, who they venerate as giving us something good on the planet. This country has statues, monuments, all over the place. These are people who have transitioned, who are no longer with us, that they want to honor for what they have contributed to what the society is all about. We also have streets named after people which is, again, the same process. So the same process is involved. And let me just say this, too, because a lot of brothers and sisters, they look at African teachings, and we always use nature and animals as, as symbols to teach us and remind us about things. And, and they teach us, they will try to tell us, well, that's strange and weird. But think about this. Hold on. Every professional basketball team or football team or your high school has a mascot. And the mascot is an animal or some form of an animal that is designed to supposed to inspire you. So we are happy to call the Yates what? Lions. Come on now. So we already see that they try to tell us one thing, but everybody else knows that this that is not the way it really goes. The Catholic Church was a form of religious worship that was created in Africa, but it was distorted when it was taken out of Africa. And so even though it has all of some of the same trappings, it has some of all of the same things that African culture has, it has a distortion. And that gets back into what we talked about before, and this is the key thing. The science of the church is still the same, but the spirituality is not. And the spirituality means the moral guideposts. So the science is the same, but with it, the intentions are not the same. Where our intentions were to bring beauty, harmony, and communion to the planet, that is not the intentions of the Catholic Church. And so we, we're not going to get into that into depth. You already know it. So let's not get too far into that. But let me just say this. You can take the principles that are shared, and you can use those principles with a positive intention and come upon a spiritual experience which will change the planet to good. There's nothing wrong with the principles. It's the application of the principles that's the problem. Just like I want to say, there's, there are no bad religions. But religion is like everything else. It has a possibility of being positive or negative. And so it is the choice that you choose how to use it as a positive force or a negative force. Everything on the planet, this is for my scientists, everything on the planet has energy. If it has energy, that means it has to have a positive and a negative pole. If it has a positive and negative pole, that means it can be positive or it can be negative. It's all about what we put our energy into. And our brothers and sisters from this part of the world gave us a beautiful example. They said inside of each one of us, there are two wolves, a positive wolf and a negative wolf. And only the wolf that you feed will live, and the wolf that you don't feed will die. So... Everything he said was so beautiful, and, and um, I wanted to give you a little bit of my background and, and, and my ancestors. You know, my grandfather, um, he was a mechanic. 
he had his own shop and he put all his children through college with his two hands and his business. Um, my great uncle, um, everybody in my family was in the civil rights movement, but he's actually in the, the, the textbooks um, because Garner versus Louisiana was the case that desegregated the lunch counters in Louisiana. That was my uncle. I he was uncle. a, yeah, he was a um, craftsman. He was a carpenter. He could whittle and carve the most amazing things. He and my grandfather got together and they built every house that they lived in. Mm -hmm. They even built a set of apartments, which was where my, my parents met. So I come from a line of, of entrepreneurs. My mother, when she passed, we found that she had eight DBAs. Eight DBAs. Say what um, DBAs are, please, for us. Who doing don't business as. She had, Thank you. She had started eight companies, um, and we knew that she was always what we called a hustler. She could sell anything. If there was something to be sold, she sold Mary Kay. She sold Avon. She sold insurance. She sold uh, real estate. She sold pre-planned funerals, she sold lingerie, she sold Tupperware, she sold, I'm leaving some stuff out, okay? <laughs> My mother had many, many, but she sold advertisements, she did screen printing at one time, I mean, just all kind of things. So, my mother wanted me to be an entrepreneur. My whole life sent me to Lamar, the high school for business professions. I wanted to go to HSPBA, the well, high school for performing and visual arts. Yes. My mother said, I want you to be a businesswoman. And I said, Mom, I'm not going to be a businesswoman. <laughs> so when I started this business, um, my mother actually got sick and she, um, you know, was given about three months to live. And I asked her, I said, should I stop? Should I stop doing the show? Should I stop performing? She said, girl, it took me 48 years to get you to be a business person. You will <laughs> not stop. You will not stop. And even the day, May 19th, which is Malcolm X's birthday, mm -hmm. my mother passed that morning. Um, and it was an amazing day. My mother passed at 6.53 in the morning on May 19th. And she had been on a liquid diet for the three days before her passing. Do you know, Baba Fana, mm -hmm. the attendant, the nurse, brought in a full plate of food at 7 a.m after my mother passed and I looked at my sister and I said, she's been on a liquid diet. Nobody put in an order for her to get some food. Come on. And I realized that the ancestors in their, whatever they did mm -hmm. caused her to have a plate of food set there for her to have on her journey mm -hmm. to, to the mm -hmm. afterlife. And it was such a beautiful thing. And then, you know, my, my, my sister was like, seven is the number of completion. She mm -hmm. dies seven minutes before, you know, the number of completion. Everything was just amazing. And so when I, when I went to the show that night, my show, we were honoring black men that night. We had a luminary show. We were honoring black men. And, and uh, I walked in and one of the men we were honoring, he was a uh, Roshan, Justice Journey, is what he's called on Facebook. He's he's a, you know, an activist for people who've been incarcerated. And we were giving him an honor, but he couldn't stay that night. So he actually had given his slot to another person. He didn't tell me who the other person was. So I walk into the venue, and all I see is African clothing mm -hmm. and onks yes. and all of this symbolism of Africa. And I stopped at the door because I almost thought I was in the wrong place Come because on. I had not booked a single African vendor for that night. Mm -hmm. But he had given his slot to Ankh for Life, mm -hmm. who came in there and decked out the whole room <laughs> in African garb. And I said, oh my gosh. What a blessing. Yes. The ancestors are telling me, we have your mother. She is with us. Mm -hmm. The village is with you. It was one of the most amazing days of my life. And, and so as I began to create designs, um, everything that I've created, there's a story behind it. Laughs mm -hmm. and Lyrics is about music, comedy, and poetry. But it's also about the marriage between laughter, 
and and the serious arts of poetry and drama and writing that you can have both in symmetry mm-hmm. and they can work together because my father was a jokester oh yeah and my mother was very serious mm-hmm very serious and they clash sometimes but they created me and i'm kind of this mixture of yeah laughs and lyrics yes right? we like to call um, it both and both and both right and. and so when you see laughs and lyrics this is kind of a an homage to my mother and my father mm-hmm. and we've got it in silver and gold on this this scrolled writing um and then a more kind of masculine design on one of the other ones um so that's kind of an homage to the fact that I wanted something to be there for everybody. I wanted some place where people could feel absolutely comfortable, whether they were serious and they wanted to talk about serious things, they wanted serious poetry, or whether they just wanted to come and have a good time and laugh. I wanted there to be something for everybody. Um, and that's what Laughs and Lyrics is about. And so we have a mixture of that music comedy and poetry we have serious artists that come out and they talk about social issues and and then we have eroticism and we have all kind of other things and then the next design that i came up with get zen stay zen spread zen this is about getting your mind right we were talking about mindset in the other show My whole journey of life has been about getting my mind right, moving away from those toxic things that have been taught to me, uh, that being black is somehow deficient, that I should be more white, even going natural and embracing my total blackness is part of my journey. You know, getting your mind right, not to say that there's anything against anybody who has a relaxer or weave or any of that, because everybody has to pick their journey. But for me, to embrace my fullness, I had to go through the process of going natural. That was part of my journey. And once you get your mind right, you want to stay zen. You want to find, again, as I've already said, teammates and environment. You know, you want to find things that help you to really embrace who you are, your journey, your goals. Um, And you want to stay on that path because we can get knocked off our path. Uh, There's so many things in life that will knock us off our path if we let those things knock us off our path. Even COVID, quarantine, has knocked a lot of people off their path. But we got to get up, dust ourselves off, you know, and keep moving forward. You know, Martin Luther King had a quote, and he said, if you can't walk, you know, crawl. So if you got to crawl... At least you're making progress. You're moving forward, you know. And then you've got spread zen. We were talking in that other segment about that continuum of of over here selfishness, exploitation, taking advantage of people, and over here this community, this vibe of I want everyone to succeed. I want to share what I have with you and I want you to share what you have with me so when you get peace when you get knowledge when you get wisdom when you get whatever it is it's for you to share it and spread it spread goodness into the world and so this is what my parents taught me all wrapped up in a very short little mantra get zen stay zen spread zen this is the way they raised me this is the the mantra i was given not exactly in these words but in the heart this one my mother believed in surrendering to something bigger than herself this is a woman who's surrendering to a cause bigger than herself she's surrendering to a higher purpose and she's getting ready to launch herself into her destiny and her future and there's all kind of lights because when i was a kid my my parents used to tell me let your light shine we used to sing that little song you know this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine and so this says lit to transmit a light to ignite a fire to inspire luminous luminous full of light and again going back to that mindset idea you can be full of darkness or you can be full of light we want to be full of light so we wanted to kind of wrap up today 
I want you to walk in Zenergy. On the wall, you have my link tree. You can find a lot of my articles, my book, my website there. It's uh, HTTPS link tree Zenashe. My cash app is dollar sign Z E N A S E poetry. Uh, my PayPal is PayPal me slash Zenashe. And Baba Fana is going to tell you how you can gift him with any love offerings that you would like to share with him. Gracias, amiga. Bastante, son. Uh, you can go to cash sign Baba, B A B A, Fana, F A N A. And also, I'm going to give a quick shout out. Every Saturday on Facebook Live, I hold class now because we can't do it live uh, in person. I have a class on Facebook Live called Conversations in African History and Culture. And if you missed the conversation on Facebook Live on Saturday at 1 o'clock, you can catch it on my Facebook page, which is under the name of Run Uraro Fana, and that's spelled R-U-N-Y-A-R-A-R-O Fana, F-A-N-A. And you can get all the classes that I've been doing for the last three months on Facebook Live. Today we introduced an instrument that has never been introduced before, and it's uh, we're using an African thumb piano, which is called a kalimba, and we introduced a mallet to that to give it a percussion sound, and then we introduced it on the drum to give it a full sound, and it sounds like this. So here on Zenergy, you got the chance to hear this new instrument that we have created. And we also used the tongue drum to give it a little more sound so that we could create a good vibe and it sounds like this. So we just wanted to share that with everybody. And we are... I want to say, Asante Sana, thank you so much, Sin, for having me on the show with you today. I hope that we've been able to share some good thoughts, some good energies that will help us all along the way toward creating Wakanda and leaving Walmart. You know, that was the example I used to use all the time, that we're either going to Wakanda or going to Walmart, but we're going to Wakanda. And I have a new example that I used, and that was, stay out the casino, come to the garden. Western culture is like the casino. It entices you thinking that you're going to get something for nothing, that you're going to have some kind of wonderful experiences. You use lights, colors. It's, it ain't never going to give you what you need. Never go to the devil for what God can give you. Come to the garden. The garden is where you can be nourished. The garden is where you can find peace, joy, love, and happiness. And on that note, I'm going to turn it back over to Zen. Stay out of the casino. Come to the garden. Awesome. I want to thank you guys for joining us. So we will be back again on Friday. I will let you know who's going to be with us then. So the goal is for you to walk in Zenergy, walk in that positive energy, fulfill that urge for more harmony in your life, and definitely tap into resources that help you grow. That's what we want to do. So may you walk in Zenergy. Thank you for joining us.